I'm about to meet a scientist who can't be bothered with hundredths or even thousandths of a degree for that matter, AKA a millikelvin. We, we are bored by millikelvin. We like to go to nano kelvin. That is nano Kelvin. Uh, nano Kelvin. That would be a billionth of a degree. A about billionth of absolute zero. It's very cold. It's a million times colder than interstellar space. It's just about the lowest temperature ever reached. A place so clear and cold, physicists can see the fundamental laws of nature in action. MIT's Martin Zvirlein is going to use sodium atoms to show me how to get there. The final frontier of cold. Wow. And so how do you do that? So we can uh, start over there at the oven. The oven. Step one, cook up some sodium atoms, the same kind in your table salt, to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. That way you can separate them. You want to get single atoms to play with, single sodium atoms, lots of them, yeah. a whole stream of them. Step two, hit them with lasers. I know you MIT guys have the reputation of being very smart, but I have a little tip for you. Lasers are hot. Ooh. You might be yeah. a little backwards there. Yeah, you might think about Star Trek where they kill people with lasers. Turns out here, we cool atoms down with lasers and they get a recall from it. Just if you hit a billiard ball with another billiard ball. In other words, when you hit atoms with just the right amount of laser light, it acts like a little shove in the opposite direction that the atom is moving slowing it down. If you look down here, you will actually see the cold cloud right there in the center of the vacuum chamber. So that glowing star thing? Looks, it looks like the sun. It ought to be super, super hot. No, it's actually extremely cold. Those are a billion atoms cooled to a millikelvin. A thousandth of a degree above absolute zero. But lasers can get us only so far. You cannot reach the nano Kelvin temperatures just with laser cooling. So we need another technique. Which brings us to step three. Get out your coffee cup. What takes over after laser cooling is what we call evaporative cooling. It's the same thing that happens to your coffee right now because it's just cooling down. So if you now force it a little bit by blowing on the coffee, uh, you speed that process up. The coffee gets cold more quickly. That's exactly what we do here. But instead of a coffee cup, Zvirlein uses a cup made of magnetic fields to trap his atoms. Then he blows on it with radiation and lowers the rim of the cup to let the hotter atoms escape. So now we're going to do this coffee cup cooling. It's going to bring us to nano Kelvin. OK, ready for this? Yes. Let's do this. All right. So can you please switch on this stuff? Do this. This is great. Let's switch on this guy. And then this awesome knob here. Press the awesome white button. Fantastic. So that's good. Please press F12. Always wondered what F12 does. So you see now the atoms are cooling because the cloud size gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And here you see the temperature drop, 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 drop. Oh, wow. It takes a few minutes, but eventually the atoms become so cold, they lose their individual identities altogether and coalesce into that new state of matter called a Bose-Einstein condensate. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so yes, that's the condensate? That's the condensate. But look at the temperature. Yeah, it's very cold. 177 <laughs> billionths. Billionths of a degree. 177 billionths of a degree Kelvin. This is the coldest spot in the universe right now. That's right amazing. Here. So yeah. not even in outer space? No, no, no. Outer space is a million times hotter. Not the dark side of the moon. No, it's like all hot. Comets, terrible, yeah. Black holes, nothing. nothing. This is it, this in, this, is it. in this room. Yes. That's amazing. I, yeah. I would ask its autographs if I could. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not about setting obscure records. What Zvirlein is excited about is what these exotic states of matter can teach us about the universe. Our puff of gas teaches us about the neutron stars or split second after the Big Bang there was this weird form of matter called a quark gluon plasma. A super hot type of matter in the early universe that would give rise to everything we see today. So you're telling me that this tiny freezing cold dot can teach us something about enormous blazing hot stuff. That's the fun part of physics. It connects these very different areas. The very hot, very cold, everything is governed by the same laws. Amazingly, what happens at these ultra-cold temperatures is that atoms get so smeared out, their waves start looking indistinguishable from those of super-hot particles under extreme pressure. 
like those inside the inner core of neutron stars. So dense, a teaspoon of them weighs 10 billion tons. Zvirlein and others can now simulate substances like this in their labs and probe their mysteries. That's incredible. And then in a couple more years, you'll finally do it. You'll hit 0.0, .0 absolute zero, and we'll be done. Yeah, unfortunately, it's never possible to reach absolute zero. What? You know, there's always going to be a little, little drop of energy sitting around somewhere. Turns out it's impossible to get to absolute zero because no matter how cold you get, everything has tiny quantum jitters. And where you have motion, even a tiny amount, you have heat. But that's not stopping scientists from getting even colder to explore the fundamental laws of nature and how our universe came to be. Just the way noise can drown out music, heat is like the noise that obscures things. If you get things really, really cold, you sort of drown out, you damp down all the noise, and you can listen to what nature is whispering to you.